Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome back, if this is your first time joining me, welcome. My name is Hetty and I post videos every single Sunday all about health, mindset, lifestyle, intuitive eating. So if this is your first time joining me, welcome. I'm so, so happy to meet you. I'm also a life and mindset coach who specializes in helping women heal their relationship with food and achieve their biggest, wildest dreams. So. The title of today's video is obviously I'm going to be talking about the YouTuber Olivia DeAndre. I think that's how you say her last name. But anyway, I'm guessing you know who it is. And I'm going to be talking about her very popular series on YouTube, The Glow Up Diaries, where she talks about when she was struggling with binge eating and also food addiction. So if you are not new to my channel, you obviously know that I have too had a history in bulimia and also binge eating so I thought this would be quite a fitting video to talk about because I can relate to some things that Olivia talks about in her videos in the glow up diaries when she was struggling the most with her food addiction binge eating and that sort of thing so I wanted to kind of share my my thoughts on it and from somebody who has recovered from bulimia and binge eating and compulsive overeating I wanted to kind of share my own thoughts about it. So Olivia made this very popular series called the glow up diaries and it basically documented her most recent glow up from lockdown I believe it started from and she basically talks about how her relationship with food and how she's obviously changed her body in the process but it's really really interesting because I've seen a lot of people talk about Olivia and her glow up diaries in a sort of negative light so I wanted to kind of share my own thoughts about it and what I kind of think or if you are struggling with binge and emotional eating from somebody who has recovered what to kind of consider and those kind of things as well so Olivia starts out talking about her previous past and where she went on a quite a restrictive diet by the looks of things I don't know her particular technique and what she did but I know that she was trying very hard to say no to certain foods and it looked as though she and she talks about it openly that you know when she craved something in particular she wouldn't allow herself to have it um, because she had this goal of obviously losing weight and then how that sort of spiraled into this binge eating habit that she started to repeatedly do and then more interestingly that habit of obviously if you if you've been to my channel before you obviously know that I talk about when we go on a very restrictive diet the automatic response from restriction is to binge it's physiologically an automatic response when we when we don't feed our bodies enough food our bodies will seek out large amounts of food so naturally that is exactly what happened to Olivia it's exactly what happened to me and if you want to know more about my story you can find my video I will link it down below all about my story with bulimia and binge eating and how it started so obviously then she talks about how she fell into this habit then of binge eating as a response but then from there it started to go more and more downhill and that habit of binge eating started to become a very very ingrained habit where she would become very food dependent and she was thinking about food all of the time she was eating a lot of the time she was eating you know high fat sugary foods high carb foods and it almost looked how she documented I thought it was so so relatable because I've definitely been there myself almost like this trap and this habit that you know part of you knows that it's bad and that you need to get out of it but then at the same time it feels so so difficult and so compelling every time you want to eat it's very difficult to sort of snap yourself out of and obviously her process in the glow up is to work on her mindset she did change a few things nutritionally in terms of her food which I will talk about as well but in all honesty I can totally relate to how she was in that sort of negative period of her life you know it showed you know she was going downstairs and eating food and her her dad was telling her you know you can't be eating this late you know why are you why are you eating are you actually hungry and it was really interesting because how she was talking it was almost as if she was convincing herself well you know I am hungry so I am I'm meant to eat right and 
personally I think and take this how it resonates not everyone is going to resonate with this but personally when I was recovering and I went through the process of going all in and I was seeing a lot of you know, nutritionists and intuitive eating therapists on Instagram talking about you know allow yourself to eat whatever it is that you want to eat which I think there's definitely benefit to doing that because when you've been in a period of restriction you need to allow yourself to eat unconditionally you know you need to allow yourself to eat you know, enough food for your body so that you're getting the nutrients and you're getting your body back into homeostasis however I personally found the first time I went all in that I was obviously gravitating more towards high fat high sugary foods because I've I'd restricted them for so long and it sort of got me in a spiral of feeling very addicted to those foods. I couldn't go a day or a morning without thinking about what food can I eat today. And I began to feel very dependent on those foods as well. But in the same part, so biologically within my brain, I was becoming more and more addicted to those additives, sugars and those kind of things. But at the same time, I was justifying it even more so and looking online for people for people to validate what I was doing. And, you know, these anti-diet dietitians, which no hate to them whatsoever. I think some of them are really good and they do serve a purpose. However, for me, I was looking at those people to justify my actions, to justify eating more and more. And at the same time of that, I knew in my body, I did not feel good. I was gaining more and more weight. I was feeling very sluggish. And I got to that point where Olivia did in her Glow Up Diary video where I didn't want to go out to see my friends anymore. I didn't, I felt lazy and I felt like I didn't want to do anything. And I really kind of felt where I'd sort of lost my identity in all honesty. And it's almost like I went to the other the other side of the extreme. So I'd been very meticulous with my diet and then I went all in and I was completely just focused on food and focused on I need to eat all the foods that I want. I need to give myself unconditionally permission to eat all the foods that I want. And that was all I thought about. And that is not healthy either, in my opinion. We need to get to that place of feeling balanced and feeling healthy and in all honesty I personally think you know eating sugary foods all the time it's not healthy and we know that it's not healthy and I definitely got to that place where I was like I don't feel good anymore but I also fell into that trap of feeling addicted around those foods and and looking for validation from those people on the internet to tell me oh well it's okay because I'm recovering I can eat high fat sugary foods. I just want to point out as well that people who are struggling with you know an eating disorder clinically diagnosed with anorexia or orthorexia this wouldn't necessarily apply to you because I think when you are that severely underweight you need a whole new different approach completely because the main the main idea is to help you get back to a healthy normal weight and a healthy normal relationship with food and if if you restricted yourself very very severely and for a very long time it's going to take your body more work to get to back to that homeostasis level now however when i went all in i wasn't severely underweight i had just been restricting myself for a very long time i've been saying no to different foods and putting a lot of rules in place so i did feel mentally restricted but my body was not so much of a, a lower unhealthy weight so i just wanted to make that disclaimer first and foremost because you know if you are struggling with anorexia or an eating disorder you do need to seek help professional help and you know there's def definitely different approaches to helping people recover from anorexia um people going all in and also a more structured approach but the main the main part of that is to get you back into homeostasis so i think personally that i wanted to kind of talk about is that if you are struggling with binge eating or compulsive overeating and maybe you've come from a background of restrictive eating, dieting and that sort of thing, the the tendency and, and I have definitely, I've been through all in and it does work. However, I think there's a lot of things to kind of consider beforehand because I definitely didn't consider this and I think if I had done, I would have experienced 
a, a much easier time if you have the tendency if you have a personality that's sort of very addictive personality if you struggle with binge eating and overeating in the past then not always but the likelihood of becoming very dependent on sugary high fat high fat high carb foods may be more likely so for me i had struggled with binge eating before when i was very very younger i had a negative relationship with high fat high sugary foods when i was younger i was very dependent on those foods i ate a lot of high sugar high fat foods when i was younger and then obviously i dieted in between so my relationship with food was very very all over the place really and very negative in general so by me going all in with not really having a sort of plan in place and just going for it and just saying to myself well I can eat whatever it is I want I started to notice that I would eat for the sake of eating sometimes and just because you know going into the shops for example if I saw something that I liked I would just be like well I can eat that because I've got to because I'm recovering so I wouldn't even I wouldn't even register hold on a minute do I actually want it am I going to be restricted if I if I don't have it you know does it mean that I'm being restrictive if I say no to that right now all of that sort of went out the window and I just told myself well I'm recovering so I need to eat that and that was sort of my mindset for a very long time of going all in and like I said, I started to notice that I became very dependent on food and I especially sugar. So in the morning I would wake up and I would be thinking, what can I eat today? I almost had it in my head that I needed to eat every single type of food every single day that I had restricted in the past. So I would eat boxes of chocolate, I would eat packets of cookies and things like that that in my mind now looking back I'm like that was not healthy like eating that much sugar and spiking my blood sugar up that much like I dread to even think where my blood sugar was at that time but this is I think personally the destructive side of you know these these messages about anti-diet and and eating whatever you want whenever you want because that's that's the best thing for you personally and I'm saying this personally obviously not everyone is going to agree with me and that is absolutely fine but I don't think that that is a healthy relationship with food either we can go from one extreme to the other and this side of the extreme is almost very rebellious against diets and against health in general so I had this mindset of I can eat whatever I want because I'm recovering so I can eat cookies whenever I want I can eat the whole pack whenever I want because in my mind I want to eat it now if we're talking logically now and scientifically sugar has a very addictive type of substance and I made a video talking about sugary foods and trigger foods um, so I'll link that down in the description box below as well where I talk about the effects that it can have on us and our brains but I'll talk about it very very quickly in this video as well but thinking logically the food industry creates food to make it so that we feel very very dependent and addicted to it so they create these foods that have just the right amount of crunch the right of my right amount of saltiness right amount of sugar all of those different elements that like let's say for example a packet of crisps you find those foods are very very difficult to sometimes stop at just one or two or even biscuits or things like that and it is because they are designed to be like that the, the food industry wants to make those kind of foods more addictive so that we depend on them and we buy them that that is what it comes down to the more we depend on something the more we're, we feel addicted to it the more we are going to buy it so we are going to keep that that food business in business if that makes sense now obviously i'm not saying oh god don't ever ever have sugar ever again don't ever buy crisps or chips ever again that's definitely not what i'm saying but it's it's something to consider and this is you know this is where you need to look at this from a, a very logical approach rather than getting sucked into it emotionally and thinking oh my god all of those things are very really really bad because I still eat chocolate now like I still love chocolate I still eat those kind of foods but I've 
I've understood why it is that those kind of foods feel very compelling and very addictive and looking back why I felt very addicted to those foods during my all-in journey. And if you think about it like this, if you were to have, say, one apple, that's still a sugary food, there's still sugar in that. However, you never eat one apple and think, oh my God, I need another. Like, it just does not happen. And it's just because all of those additives and those processes that, that those sugary things have gone gone through that causes us to feel very drawn to those foods so think of it like this if you are going through an all-in journey or you know recovering or you are in a process now where you feel quite addicted to food and your the main bulk of your meals the main bulk of your day is eating you know eating very high sugar high fat foods and less of the the nutritious types of foods so fruit vegetables fiber protein all of those kind of things uh, slow releasing carbohydrates those types of things our body is not getting the necessary vitamins and minerals that it needs to and survive what this means is the more that we eat and or if you imagine our cells, our cells in our body, we are full of cells, those cells get hungry and they need necessary nutrients and minerals to survive and to, to function optimally. So if we are eating loads and loads of processed foods every day and not eating anything nutritious, those cells are still empty. They, those cells are still hungry because they've not got the necessary nutrients that they actually need. So this is why you would find, say, if you have, let's say, for example, you have McDonald's, you have KFC, you have Pizza Hut, all of these different kinds of things throughout your day and you're eating chocolate, chips, all of those types of stuff throughout the day as well those cells are never getting satisfied so you can eat those things and still want to eat more after and I know firsthand that when I've eaten majority of my meals that are all high carb high fat high sugar I never feel satisfied it's like when I eat something sweet I then want something salty when I eat something salty I then want something sweet and it's sort of a never-ending cycle so whereas when we eat more nutritiously and more balanced when we're eating protein carbohydrates fiber fruits veg fats the healthy types of fats our bodies are getting the necessary nutrients that it needs to survive so like i said i'm not saying that you can or that you shouldn't ever eat something sugary but i'm kind of trying to help you inform you on how these kind of foods can affect our body and our hunger signals as well sugar can be quite addictive anyway it can affect part of the brain the amygdala which gets sort of very stuck in its ways and causes us to build habits so when we eat sugar we get a good feeling after there's a hormone that is released called serotonin and also endorphins we feel good when we've eaten something like chocolate or something very sugary it gives us that good feeling so whenever we eat something that feels good that feels really good and we get that hit of dopamine as well from those from those foods our brain recognizes that oh this is a really really good thing this is what she needs this is a really really good thing and it remembers that it remembers that feeling and it remembers that you know when she is upset we eat that food and we get dopamine so your brain doesn't register actually that's an unhealthy coping mechanism it just sees the effect and it sees how how much our dopamine hit increases and how much of a good thing it is so this habit if you like gets stored in the lower part of our brain called the amygdala and that is when this habit starts to form so when we act on an urge over and over and over again that habit becomes stronger and this can be why a lot of people who go from uh, sometimes anorexia to bulimia to binge eating can feel very very addictive to food because they've acted on an urge over and over again and I think personally that is what happened to Olivia and also myself when I went through the all-in process uh, the first time because I wasn't aware that that could happen I was so engrossed in the thought that 
I need to eat this much because I'm recovering when actually I wasn't aware that actually sugar can form a very destructive habit and that habit formation forms in your brain and feels very compulsive and out of control and the more like I said the more you act on a habit the more stronger it gets so if you've acted on that habit over and over again it can feel like it's just a part of you and that there's no way of stopping it and that you wake up every day and you know that you're going to binge or you know you're going to eat sugar so that is definitely what I find so relatable about Olivia's glow up diary I thought it was so so powerful and personally I thought it was really really needed because even though I love the community on Instagram and things like that of, you know, anti-diets that we shouldn't be trying to constantly lose weight and restrict our calories and things. However, I do also think that 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 saying that, you know, we should eat all the foods that we want, we should never restrict ourselves can also be quite damaging as well. And I've definitely fallen into that trap myself where I've almost come away from the health aspect and just thought, well, I'm recovering so I can eat whatever and whenever I want to. I think those two are quite extreme. And if you want a healthy relationship with food, look at somebody who already, who you admire, who has a healthy relationship with food having healthy boundaries in place is healthy it's not a bad thing if you think of it like this that you know sometimes a lot of the time you want to stay up late you want to stay up till midnight but you know you've got to be up early that would be a disservice to yourself for giving yourself what you want in the moment for you know the next day the next day you would suffer if you stayed up until one one in the morning and you had to be up at say six six a.m that would not be healthy so it's about putting those healthy boundaries in place that yes i know i want to stay up late right now but i know that i'm going to suffer in the morning so i'm going to suffer suffer i'm going to put you know i'm going to put a boundary in place i'm going to go to sleep early so that i wake up feeling better and feeling good that is an example of putting a healthy boundary in place it doesn't always feel good in the moment right in the moment you might want the cookie or you might want the whole box of chocolates you might want to stay up late but actually in the long run is it going to serve you long term is it going to make you feel good is it going to make you feel healthy usually more often than not no and i think this is the problem with you know the anti-diet industry at the moment sometimes anyway not always but it's almost like they the message that i definitely got from it was that i should never ever say no to myself i should eat whatever i wanted whenever i wanted if i didn't then that was restrictive and that was bad so i sort of came completely away from putting any boundaries in place to having no boundaries at all and then feeling just completely out of control and just feeling like I was addicted to sugar and feeling quite unhealthy to be honest. So the next thing that I wanted to talk about is how Olivia came out of that destructive relationship with food and, and that food addictive cycle to develop this what she calls a healthy relationship with food now and also losing the weight that she'd gained. Now I'm not necessarily just focusing on weight loss, but I'm, I wanted to kind of talk about her approach to nutrition and also her mindset. Because I think this is where a lot of people have been slating her in some videos. I know, you know, a lot of people have been making videos and saying that it's really harmful and that sort of thing. So I kind of wanted to share my thoughts on the on the matter and obviously these are my thoughts you don't have to agree and if you don't agree that is absolutely fine it's just about sharing perspective so olivia hired a personal trainer a celebrity personal trainer i think his name was steve but i honestly can't remember his last name and she obviously hired him to help her with her nutrition and to lose weight initially it wasn't necessarily to help her overcome binge eating but obviously he put boundaries in place that helped her eventually learn more about nutrition and i thought the interesting thing about steve that i really admired was that even though i've been a personal trainer myself um but i think sometimes a lot of personal trainers nowadays focus mo mostly on losing weight and don't necessarily care about their client's relationship with food and I think that is one of the most important things to consider. Um, 
and it's definitely something that I consider quite a lot when I was a PT because I think it's so prominent that you can start somebody to try and lose weight or help them lose weight and they develop a very negative relationship with food so it's very important to educate them on that and I really liked his approach on educating her properly about nutrition and about how fat loss works but the main thing he he kind of emphasized was that if you do have a slip up do not worry like that that has nothing that has got nothing to do with you as a person it means nothing to do with you being a bad person at all you're not good or bad neither is food good or bad which i totally totally agree with and i really liked his approach with that from that angle he talks also about the the dangers of sugar and how it spikes up our insulin levels so it takes basically we have sort of a baseline and when we are at baseline our body is in fat burning mode if you like so whenever we eat our insulin spikes so if you imagine when you eat a cookie a sugar cookie our insulin might spike up say 50 centimeters on a graph whereas if you were to eat an apple your insulin levels might spike up to 10 centimeters on that graph so the cookie is obviously longer it's obviously spiked more it's spiked higher which means it's going to take your body longer to kind of come back down to baseline so i thought that that was really interesting and i've done a lot of education in the in the world of insulin and that sort of thing i used to work with pre-diabetic people so i do understand a lot of that but also it is something that i find quite interesting as well because i do think having a more health-based approach to nutrition is definitely going to benefit you in the long run because we don't realize how many additives and things are in our food and we don't know what's going into our food a lot of the time but obviously if you know me you know that i have a very balanced approach to food and nutrition but it's something that i just want to learn more and more about and everybody's relationship with food a healthy relationship with food will look very different to to one person from the next so i think if you do feel quite triggered by me talking about this kind of thing please switch off you don't have to have to watch this video but yeah so he sort of obviously talks about the dangers of having a lot of sugar and i think that's obviously why olivia felt so compelled around sugar and fat because she felt that addictive feeling as a result of eating so much sugar so her body was constantly in fat storage mode as opposed to fat burning mode so the more sugar she ate the more it would sort of affect her negatively i think i absolutely fine but i think personally looking back on my own journey i know that i was relying very much on sugar for the large portion of the day i would eat sugary cereal i would eat sugary cakes for breakfast you know for lunch i would have a lot of bread chocolates i would snack on a lot of chocolates as well because in my mind i was telling myself i'm recovering so it's okay i can eat this which looking back i did not feel healthy at all and i did not feel good about myself at all so it's really important to consider the two and ask yourself you know right now with your current approach to nutrition or where you are right now with your eating behaviors does it feel good for you does it align with the type of relationship with food that you actually want to have you know, just consider those and and do it so in a non-judgmental way and if it doesn't match up then how can you start taking action towards that more healthy balanced relationship with food maybe it's swapping snacks instead of crisps and chocolate swap it for fruit maybe drinking more water instead of drink soda or fizzy fizzy pop so the next part i wanted to talk about olivia's approach to her weight loss journey and her mindset so she does quite a large portion of the episodes talking all about her shift in mindset in order to help her do the hard things so she talks about before when she had a negative relationship with food that she lacked discipline she was lazy i think and i know people have slated this i think there's two sides to this in all honesty because i feel like i've been there i feel like i've gotten in that place of becoming very complacent with myself allowing myself to say to say no to everything so whether that be you know working out and exercising and not doing things and just eating whatever i wanted i think yes there's a time and a place for that especially if you're recovering from it from a very restrictive eating disorder there's a period of time that you need rest and that you need to rejuvenate so i don't 
you know, I don't necessarily think having rest and the term laziness, I don't, I want to say that I don't necessarily see that in such a negative light. Laziness is not a bad thing and I can see why some people have thought that, you know, she's labelling binge eating and bulimia as lazy. I don't think that was her intention, in all honesty. I think for her, and I know myself, I struggle with this, you sort of get in a in a routine of not wanting to push yourself, not wanting to step out your comfort zone, wanting to do the same thing every day. And, you know, whether that be, you know, just telling yourself, I'm, I'm not going to go out and exercise in a place where it doesn't, where it starts to not feel good. And I think she shows that it no longer feels good. If it feels good to rest, then you know it feels good to rest because sometimes me personally I have to rest and that makes me feel so so much better but I know back then when I was struggling when I and even now sometimes I I'm tempted to you know not work out or not move as much but I know it doesn't make me feel good in the long term and again it's about going about putting those healthy boundaries in place and thinking about long term you know is this healthy does it make me feel good and I know logically for me I always feel better for going out for a walk I feel better for going for a run or working out it makes me feel good so I can totally relate to what she was saying I don't personally I didn't take that as a negative that she was calling you know binge eating a lazy thing but I can also see why people thought that and binge eating and bulimia is not lazy in the slightest it is far from that it is very it's a it's a very very challenging negative mental state to be in and it's very detrimental and I have been there so I totally understand and personally looking at her kind of relationship with food when she was struggling with that food addiction side I can see the difference between that and binge eating that I would call compulsive overeating where she felt the need to continue to eat more and more throughout the day she would eat in public whereas binge eating and I've got a video on what binge eating is and what it isn't so I will link that down below if you want to watch it but really binge eating for me was very secretive it was very quick and it was very fast i had no control over myself whereas how she was projecting and documenting her struggle with food is she was very compulsive she felt the need to always be around food to always make food to always eat food but she would eat in front of other people that to me is not like binge eating binge eating and bulimia are very very secretive so I thought personally that it was a really really interesting and inspiring in all honesty her approach to coming out of that rut of feeling very demotivated lacking confidence you know she didn't want to go out and meet her friends she didn't want to take care of her appearance I too have been there when you are eating that way and you feel low in yourself and you're not doing anything out of your own comfort zone it's a very very dangerous place to be in mentally because you feel like there's no way out and that you're just stuck and I thought it was super super empowering because it's almost like borderline depression when I was struggling the most with food I felt depressed I've never been clinically diagnosed as depressed but that is how I felt I never wanted to get changed I didn't want to go out and see my friends I didn't even want to go out to the shops apart from to buy food whereas she obviously documents her shift in mindset where she and this is a lot of the work that I do with my own clients is recognizing that negative voice that negative voice that tells you that you should stay the same that you should continue acting out on those negative behaviors self-sabotage you know give in not do scary things but really when you think about it whatever it is in life something that we want to achieve and it doesn't lie within our comfort zone in order to achieve something we have to step out of our comfort zone we have to do things that we don't want to do for example going for a job that you've always wanted to do you have to go through the process of having an interview interviews are scary they're not enjoyable but you have to go through that process in order to get the job in the first place and likewise making improvements to your health you have to say no to certain foods occasionally not in a restrictive way but in a healthy boundary way you have 
to you know step out your comfort zone go out and exercise drink more water when you actually want soda all of those little things and I think it's really really powerful that she was able to show that because we get very as humans we get stuck in our ways and we form habits very very easily and it's very easily done to begin a habit that that maybe stems from a healthy positive place but then forming the negative relationship with food of becoming very dependent on it and not wanting to exercise not wanting to take care of our health again the the two are very extreme and and we need to personally i think if you're watching this video and you resonate with what i say notice what habits right now feel good for you that feel benefit for you if it's you know you need to eat unconditionally at the moment then that's absolutely fine but if you're finding that at the moment you know you're eating that way and it no longer feels good for you it no longer feels aligned with that higher version of yourself that healthier version of yourself then now is time to make amends and start watching how your, how your mindset is around those certain habits and behaviors and that is what i loved about olivia's glow up diaries because she she documents and talks about you know that negative voice in her mind that tells her that she's no that she's not good enough and that she can never do these things this is so much of the kind of work that I do with my own clients and I honestly think that whatever you want to achieve in life is a hundred percent possible you just have to believe that you can do it and and keep working on your mindset the more you work on your mindset the more you develop discipline so at the start Olivia had less discipline and she built that that discipline muscle it's basically like a muscle you go to the gym you work a muscle it gets stronger same with discipline the more that you work that muscle of discipline the the stronger it gets and and then you can be that type of person that that acts out on discipline on a day-to-day -day basis now of course this is all relative and it's there's no right or wrong way of doing this but everyone is completely different and they're completely different circumstances but i honestly think take the glow up diaries as it is and what you know you don't have to follow her religiously or what she said religiously take what you can from it use it for what it is i think she's really really inspiring and and she's just shows how easy it is to become very dependent on food or substance and and actually how how easy really logically it is to break free from those habits if you feel stuck in your life right now if you feel stuck around your relationship with food negative relationships with food addictive substances you can too get out of that and i think that is the main message that we need to take from olivia's glow up diaries series that we are in control of our life it's all down to our mindset and the more we work on our mindset the more discipline and the more we can take those steps towards a healthier happier life and that healthy happier life is completely subjective and different for every single person so it is not a one size fits all it's simply becoming a better version of yourself and that is the work that i do with my own clients i help you get to that place of becoming a healthier version of you it's not you know this is what a healthy version of you looks like or weighs or anything like that it is completely subjective and it is down to you it's how you want to feel and how you want to live your life essentially so don't allow you know a video on youtube to tell you what you need to look like or how much weight you need to lose it is down to you at the end of the day what you want to live if you're happier eating more high processed foods every day then that's absolutely fine if that feels good for you if not and that is why i wanted to share my opinion because it's it didn't feel good for me and I definitely fell into that trap of feeling like or convincing myself that I needed that food because I was recovering despite intuitively my body didn't feel good I felt so sluggish so fatigued because I was so dependent and felt addicted around food and that to me did not feel good and that all stemmed from hearing these messages from anti-diet people telling me that I need to eat as much as I want to in order to recover you need to take things with a pinch of salt and take things what feels good for you there is no right or wrong way of doing things you have to see what works for you and what doesn't 
so i really hope you enjoyed this video guys if you want me to do any more of these kind of videos these kind of review review videos then please let me know as always if you've got any questions please let me know comment down below you can also follow me on instagram and facebook i have my own private facebook support group available so you can request to join that it is completely free and of course if you like this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up i really really appreciate all your views and likes and if you would like to see more from me please subscribe and with that being said guys I will see you in the next video